Hello and welcome to my course, From Data to Decisions. This is Chris Mack, your instructor, and this is lecture 28 on weighted linear regression. Recall that we have a, quite a few assumptions that are used in ordinary least squares regression. If these assumptions are met, then the estimates that we get from our regression are the best linear unbiased estimates possible. So we love OLS if these assumptions can be met for that reason. One of the assumptions is that all of the residuals for every data point have the same probability density function. In other words, if I repeated the experiment over and over and over again, I get different sets of residuals. And if I constructed a distribution of all the residuals from every different experiment that I could possibly run, I would get a probability density function for each, and they must all be the same. And that includes having the same variance, which we call homoscedasticity. And when that assumption is violated, a change in the variance from data point to data point, that's called heteroscedasticity. This varying of the variance uh, shown in this graph as a pretty typical megaphone shape, um, but other shapes of these kinds of changes in the spread of the residuals as a function of the predicted y value or possibly as a function of the regressor variables um, needs to be dealt with. How do we deal with this change? Well, uh, we're going to deal with, uh, we're going to show you how to use weighted regression to deal with it. First, let's make sure we understand why we need to deal with it. If the variance varies, makes OLS regression inefficient. It doesn't bias the parameters. Uh, the resulting parameters are still unbiased, but they're not the best unbiased estimates. Best meaning lowest variance. Uh, so the result is that the standard errors of these estimates is larger than it could be otherwise. And if we do statistical tests on those parameters or calculate confidence intervals, those tests won't be as accurate as if we had a constant variance. But a little bit of change in the variance doesn't matter that much. If you have standard deviations that change from, from uh, one area to another by a factor of two, well, that's barely noticeable. That's barely noticeable, hardly uh, causes much impact at all on the standard errors of the parameters. But if the standard deviation starts changing by more than a factor of two, a factor of four, or a factor of eight, kind of, of difference in the, in the standard deviation, then we begin to notice it. And then we have to start doing something about it. And one thing we can do about it is to use a weighted regression. And that's what we're going to talk about now. Let's talk about weighted maximum likelihood estimators. MLE, my maximum likelihood estimators, was our approach in uh, OLS re uh, regression, if we had a normal distribution, then a maximum likelihood estimator turned out to be the same as the least squares estimator. Uh, and we're going to do the same kind of thing here that we did when we derived the maximum likelihood estimator for OLS. But now our residuals, which we'll still assume are normally distributed, could have a different variance, a different standard deviation for each data point. But we're still going to assume that every residual is independent of all the others. Therefore, for independent variables, the likelihood function is the product of the probability of each individual data point. So probability of getting that particular residual here is multiplied all together gives us the likelihood of that particular data set. And because it's normal, that probability is proportional to an exponential uh, of a Gaussian function. So that's uh, um, residual squared divided by two times variance of that data point. Um, the product of all these exponentials sums up all the arguments of the exponentials when we multiply them all together. So we're going to minimize the chi-square. But we're going to weight the residuals in the following way. Since, since sigma i squared may be different for each different data point, we'll define a weight to be 1 over 
the variance of that specific data point. And just plugging that in here, the chi-square, which is the summation of the residual squared, will be a summation of the weight times the square of the residual for each data point. This will be our definition of the chi-square, in particular the weighted chi-square. And then we'll do the same thing we did before. We'll take the derivative of the chi-square with respect to each parameter, set it equal to zero for every k, for every parameter that we have, we'll get a series of equations that we solve simultaneously. Uh, and in our normal way of doing it, we'll use matrix math to solve that those simultaneous equations. For the case of our straight line model, uh, which, which we're doing just for the convenience, the simplicity of it, uh, we can answer the question analytically. Um, so here's our, our straight line model. Residual is the actual data point minus the model equation, functional form. Uh, and the chi-square then is expressed here. But now we have the weight inside the residual squared, multiplying the residual squared. And we take the derivative of chi-square with respect to the intercept, set it equal to zero, solve, and we get our solution. This is just like we did before for ordinary least squares regression. And in fact, our solution looks very similar. It says the intercept is the mean value of y sub w minus the slope times the mean value of x sub w. And this x and sub w and y sub w bars are the weighted means. So I take the data points, multiply by the weights, add them all up. And instead of dividing by n, I divide by sum of all the weights. Uh, these weighted means then allow our new equation for the intercept to look almost exactly like the old equation where we substitute the means for the means uh, are these weighted means. Note that it's common to normalize the weights so that the sum of the weights equals n, number of data points. But that's not required because we, we normalize every single time. Uh, in, in fact, you, you can use unnormalized weights anytime you want. And, all the software that allows the input of weights for weighted regression. We can solve for uh, our estimate of the slope by substituting our estimate of beta 0 into the equation, taking the derivative with respect to beta 1, setting it equal to 0, doing the algebra. And again, we get an equation that looks just like it looked before, except for we have these weights and weighted means showing up. Well, these analytical solutions are, are useful for a straight line model, but the, the standard way of doing uh, ordinary least squares regression with matrix math works just as well after we've weighted uh, all of the data. So uh, we will be able to use our ordinary least squares regression with just a slight modification. Notice also, that if the weights are equal to 1 for every single data point, then we have ordinary least squares regression. All these equations just revert to OLS. Of course, finding the best fit parameters is not enough. We have to be able to calculate the standard error for each parameter. And to do that, we normally think about the standard deviation of the residuals. But here, to talk about the standard deviation of the weighted residuals. The weighted residual will be the residual multiplied by the square root of the weight. And then what we care about is the standard error of the weighted residuals, uh, which looks just like our standard error formula for the residuals, uh, except for we use the weighted residuals. In fact, that's, that's going to be a theme here. All of our residual analysis will be just like before, except for we use the weighted residuals. And ever we graph or, or do analysis on our residuals. That allows us to calculate the standard error of the slope estimate, the standard error of the intercept estimate. And these equations all look about the same, uh, but we're using standard errors of residuals. All right, for our weighted regression, uh, most statistic packages like R allows this seamlessly. Um, next lecture, we'll actually do some 
weighted regression in R, and we'll find out we'll be able to use the same LM linear model function we've been using all the time. We just have to have one extra column, and one extra set of data, which are just all the weights. If you use Excel for regression, uh, the LinS function does not support weighted least squares regression. Uh, there is an Excel add-on that I've used, and I actually like. It's very nice, called Real Statistics. And you can go to this website uh, and download a package, and it's free. And you can do weighted linear regression in Excel. Even though this is a very nice package, uh, I, I think you're going to find uh, doing this kind of work in R is going to be a lot easier than relying on Excel with added packages. Final note, this is harping back to a topic from a few lectures ago. Uh, we mentioned that outliers have to be dealt with, and there's multiple ways that you can deal with outliers, like removing them or Windsorizing them, um, using an expected value, uh, truncating. But another approach, another thing you can do is keep the outlier in the regression, but weight it less heavily. So assume that the variance, the reason why it's an outlier is for some reason the variance of that data point was larger than the variance of all the other data points. And if you have some way of guessing what that might have been, you can weight that outlier less heavily by using a larger estimated variance for that outlier and then run the regression using weighted linear regression. So this becomes another technique for dealing with outliers. Well, uh, the key to doing any of this is having estimates for the weights. What weights do you use? Well, the best way uh, to, to supplying a set of weights is to have some a priori knowledge, some knowledge that came outside of the experiment, outside of the data that you've collected, knowledge that's maybe specific to how you do measurements or maybe the theory of, of how the y values are generated gives you some understanding of why there would be a different weight, why there would be a different variance for each of these data points. If you don't have some external knowledge that will help you understand what the weight should be, well, then then what? Well, uh, scientists and engineers do a lot when they don't know the answer is they guess. Make a guess. Just assume some form. Uh, maybe the assumption has a little bit of uh, background knowledge involved. You just uh, think that probably it might be that the standard deviation is proportional to the response, to y. Or maybe the standard deviation is proportional to a particular predictive variable. Um, maybe the variance is proportional to the response or predictive variable. You have some guess, and the guess might fit with uh, the data that you see for this particular data set, or it might fit with some assumptions you make about the process you're using, but it's still a guess. And if it's a guess, you might try it to see if it makes sense uh, and throw it out if it doesn't. The second option is to perform ordinary least squares aggression, uh, uh, regression and then look at how the variance varies. You can plot the residual squared, the uh, ESR squared in particular, uh, versus the predicted values, or maybe versus x. And you can fit it to a function, the most common being just a straight line. And, and that straight line fit can give you the weights. Essentially, 1 over the straight line fit y value would be the weight that you would apply to that y value. Uh, this is a, just an empirical way of using your data to come up with the weights. Uh, it basically assumes that the variance is proportional to either the response or to the predictor variable, whichever one you do. One of the important things to remember that in a weighted regression, you're minimizing some of the squares of the weighted residuals. We're trying to make the weighted residuals homoscedastic, 
because we know the residuals are not. They have variation. So uh, variance is changing systematically. So when we want to look at the final result to see if we've done a good job, we need to plot and analyze the weighted residuals. Weighted residuals are simply the actual residuals multiplied by the square root of each weight. And when we calculate the internally studentized residual or the externally studentized residual, we use the weighted residuals rather than the raw residuals. So if you recall all the formulas we had in the past about ISR and ESR, we would simply substitute in the weighted residual where we had the regular raw residual before. All the software packages that do weighted regression, when they output ISR or the ESR values, they will be outputting weighted, the, the studentized residuals based on the weighted residuals. Then when you want to plot, you can plot those studentized residuals and do tests on the studentized residuals just like before. Some people like to plot studentized residuals versus the weighted data, so a weighted predicted value here or weighted uh, regressor variable here. Um, there's some reasons why you'd want to do that. It's in fact, you know, the, the residuals are statistically independent of, of the weighted, weighted values. Um, but then there are some reasons why you don't always want to do it like that. So many people just plot versus predicted or regressor variables directly like we've always done. Finally, I mentioned that uh, there's a Excel add-in if you want to do weighted regression in Excel. Um, I recommend the package from Real Statistics. This website is a great resource for statistics, doing statistics in Excel. And you can download this, uh, this package, XLAM file, which uh, becomes an add-in to Excel. And then you've got uh, Real Statistics packages available to you for analysis in Excel. That's all we're going to say about this, because from now on we're going to use R for our weighted linear regressions. All right, what have we learned in Lecture 28? As always, you should be able to quickly and easily answer these questions. Why would we ever want to do a weighted regression? What is a weighted mean? Why do the weights relate? How, excuse me, how do the weights relate to the variance of each experimental y value? How do we estimate weights? And finally, how does weighted regression affect the way we analyze our residuals? Well, in our next lecture, we'll actually use weighted regression in R. Until then.